right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, I worked as a professional matchmaker. Here's why you can't find love. Hard truth, it's not them, it's you. And guys, this article, which is very entertaining and very... Uh, not all a surprise. This article is written by a woman. She was a, she was in the past past tense was a female matchmaker, professional matchmaker in Australia, and she's writing this this article here addressing women, and she's going to talk about how pretty much with this job as a matchmaker it seemed like her dream job to help people and all that, but then she realized just how difficult it was. It was so hard it was for her to do her job because. It wasn't working so well because at the end of the day, she couldn't find these matches for these single women because, wait for it, they were too picky. It was always something. And I find it funny because often I'll talk about in these stories and articles I go over just nowadays how ridiculously picky so many women are. And they wonder why they're alone. And they get to their 30s and 40s and they're forced to oftentimes freeze their eggs because they the clock's ticking and they, they haven't found a man yet because they're too picky. Or they resort to um, in vitro fertilization because, again, they're now maybe they're in their 40s and they still haven't gotten a guy because they've been so picky. And it's quite funny because at the end of the day, it's funny but also absurd because at the end of the day, it, the fingers point at men saying, where are all the good men? Or there's no good men out there. You know, or men got to man up and get their act together and get better jobs and do all these things when... There are plenty of great guys out there, plenty of good guys, be good husbands, good fathers, but this ridiculously, this ridiculous laundry list of things on the checklist that these gals want. The, all the sixes, six feet tall, six figure income, six pack, six inches or more down south, a uh, speaks a foreign language, plays a musical interest, instrument, was captain of the football team or soccer team or basketball team in high school or college. The, the list goes on and on. You know what I'm talking about here. And this woman here completely just vouches for that. She Right here. So anyhow, guys, it's pretty entertaining. I'm going to go over it now, and you guys will definitely get a laugh out of this. So it starts off. She says, uh, I was a huge fan of the Millionaire Matchmaker series. The idea of helping people find love felt like a glamorous and meaningful career to me. So when I had the opportunity to become a matchmaker to professional singles in Sydney, I jumped at the chance. I thought I would be changing people's lives, helping them find the one person that they create a loving home and family with. In reality, I spent my days meeting sales targets while trying to discreetly juggle a three to one female male client ratio. Despite all this, I could see the people I met generally wanted to find someone to love and be loved. And what Patty Strange recognized in her clients on the Millionaire Matchmaker was also what I witnessed in the, sing the singles of Sydney. Their biggest challenge in finding love was, wait for it, themselves. There you go. How many of you guys watching this know women, whether it's uh, women in your family, friends, acquaintances, female co-workers, whatever, that just they just go through guy after guy after guy, and they're always whining about that well, there's no good men out there, or they're crying because they're a certain age, and they're not married yet, and it's like, what are you talking about? It's you. You're the problem. And where does that come from, guys? It comes from decade, many things. Decades of the you-know-what movement. Convincing women, they pretty much deserve everything. The, the advertisements there, like, uh, what, what was it? I can't think of the advertisement, but you're worth it. Whatever that was, I'll come back to me later. That, that slogan, things, advertisements like that, the idea that women deserve everything and shouldn't settle. Don't settle for any man because you're worth it. Or the, the uh, attention they get bombarded with on dating apps and uh, social media like Instagram. That goes to a lot of gals' heads. And to be honest here, for, a guy, if, for guys, if they were constantly bombarded with all the attention that a typical above-average woman gets, it would go to our heads. Let's, let's be honest here. But it doesn't usually work that way. And so they just... Next, 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 next thing you know, 30s and they're alone. And, and professionals... They have to go to professionals to find somebody. And even that, they're making them crazy. Anyhow, it goes on. It says, it's time to look in the mirror. A reoccurring theme with my clients was they believed their failure to find love was an external issue. Repetitive and predictable excuses. 
My work is too busy. I don't have time to date. There aren't enough good there aren't enough good men out there. I was waiting for that. Their lack of self-awareness and commitment to themselves was closing them off to finding someone. They all had some version of a broken heart, insecurity, entitlement, ding ding ding, or uh, desperateness. Well, who doesn't at some point, really? Without addressing the above, matches were viewed through a tainted vision of rejection, fear, or the preconceived perceptions, no matter how compatible that they were. The never-ending list of non-negotiables. Expectations were high. It's amazing all the non-negotiables. And you know what, guys? I'll be fair here. It's okay to have certain uh, deal breakers, in my opinion. Like, let's just say uh, you hate smoking. So no way in hell do you want to date somebody or get involved with somebody that's a smoker. Okay, that's fair. Or let's just say uh, you're very religious. Okay, you know, you're a churchgoer and it's very important for you to meet somebody that is, uh, you know, equal in the view, in religious faith and all that. And so you want someone that's along that those lines. Okay, I get that too. Or let's just say you're a fitness nut and you want to be with somebody else who's also a fitness nut that likes to go to the gym, gym rat, takes care of their body, eats healthy. I get that. But things like, well, he has a, he, he has all these great qualities, but he has a slightly receding hairline. Next, he makes $98,900 a year, but not 100000 Next, he has a four-pack fit body, but not a six-pack. Next, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Those Those supposed non-negotiables. Like, get the hell out of here. Anyhow, said expectations were high. Our membership fees ranged from, uh, in the Australian dollars, $2,000 to $10,000, yet they could afford it. Man, that's a lot of change. That's a lot of dough to find a dude. In truth, their expectations, their high expectations were due to non-negotiables list, which kept growing year by year. Ah, imagine that. Their ideal partner criteria was a long list of, now listen to this, financially secure. And I actually don't mind that. But then there's what is the definition of financially secure. Financially secure, successful, ambitious, mature, easygoing, health conscious, active, good looking, strong family values, once marriage, once children, confident, well-traveled, well-groomed, emotionally strong, good friendships, etc., etc. Now, some of those I can understand, but other ones, it's like, you got to be shitting me. You're not going to type into a computer and print out and have a dude come out with a, uh, what do you call, with a 3D printer, some guy like uh, they did in Weird Science, that movie from the 80s, with, with the chick, Kelly LeBrock. You're not going to do that. You're not going to find somebody that has all these things. And she didn't, and, and she, there were still more, but she just stopped there. She says, with extensive criteria to evaluate their matches, clients would lose the opportunity to feel and see any real connection on their dates. They would mentally rule out the person within the first few minutes, rejecting the opportunity based on insignificant detail, and then call me later to provide the following feedback. Listen to this. His hairline is receding. I didn't like his shoes. He works in IT. IT? And my favorite, I didn't like how he pronounced his HS. I'm not sure what that means. I'll probably figure it out later. Hair, clothes, and job titles are irrelevant, irrelevant when it comes to love. And no one is ever going to align with an ex- exhaustive list of non-negotiables. Exactly. Searching for the missing piece to your puzzle, many of my clients' idea of love was someone who met all their needs and ticketed all their boxes. Let me tell you guys, I know some women that are in their 40s and 30s, but particularly in their 40s, that, let me tell you, for their age, are darn good looking. I will absolutely give credit where credit's due. They take care of themselves, all that. And when they were younger, really hot. The problem was, is that they knew it. And they had these high expectations. They thought they, they, they pretty much deserved, every, they deserved a dude with a yacht and a Ferrari. And guess what happened? Now they're older. They are lower on the totem pole. And the dudes that they wanted, they don't want them. They had plenty of opportunities before, and yet they cry and cry and cry and are upset because they don't have a family, and some can't have kids, and things like that. This is what you get. You're not going to find a guy that's going to have 
everything on the giant checklist. You know, just like a guy is not going to find a woman that has everything on the checklist either. Let, let's be fair here, because I know i got a lot of guys here that watch me that do relationships. Guys, you're not going to find a chick that's going to have everything on the freaking checklist if you do relationships. I hate to break it to you. But I get the deal breakers, but come on here. Anyhow, she says they weren't acknowledging that a relationship is two unique and independent people entering in a journey together. That they find themselves needing to show up and be reciprocal in nurturing the partnership. Love should enhance the, the lives of both partners in the relationship. And it's a tall order to ask just one person to meet all of our needs. All right. She says, instead of looking for a person who checks off all the boxes, focus on a person with whom you can imagine yourself writing a story with that en entails edits and revisions. Yeah. If there's minor little things that, that, that they have that maybe aren't perfect. And by the way, guess what? To the women that are so picky, I got news for you. You're not perfect either. You, you have flaws. We all got flaws. I got flaws. Trust me. Every one of you guys watching this right now, you got flaws. And you darn well know. At least we can admit it. Apparently, uh, let's see here. A quote here from Esther Peril, a psychotherapist and expert on relations and sexuality, says, as human beings, relationships are fundamentally are fundamental to who we are. The biggest problem I had with the matchmaking agency I worked for was they didn't offer any personal coaching or counseling services. To me, it was obvious our clients needed it and essential for their ability to connect with others romantically. Sounds like they definitely needed it. It may seem counterintuitive or selfish to focus on yourself when you desire the love of someone else. But if you're not happy with yourself, no one else will be able to create that happiness for you. Well, the reality is most people don't most people don't like themselves, let alone love themselves. And in my opinion, in my life experience, I've yet to meet any woman ever, I don't care how hot she is, that doesn't isn't insecure about something, let alone many things. And in fact, Generally, the better looking women, the more insecure they really are. They are masters at hiding it. But believe me, they're not as confident as they come up. So for you guys out there that are in a relationship and dating and pick up and you see these smoking hot women out at the, at the bars or the clubs or in a, ho a hotel bar or wherever you, wherever you go see women and they're together and they have that aura of confidence and superiority, trust me, I guarantee you they're not that confident. But... They may be a little arrogant, but they're not confident. It says, but if you're not happy with yourself, blah, blah, blah. I write this from experience, not just as a matchmaker, but someone who has been in a relationship for 16 years. Love starts with you. And here's a little poem or quote from somebody. It says, self-love is less about the ability to withstand loneliness or establish independence and more about awareness and acceptance of our incompleteness. It's about letting others love us even, even when we feel unlovable because their version of us often kinder than our own. Esthel Peril. Oh, how nice. Anyhow, guys, I thought that it was a quick quick, uh, quick article, but I thought you'd like it just reinforcing the matchmaker. The former matchmaker is making her job impossible because the women were too picky. And obviously, it's, when she says former matchmaker. So eventually, at one point, she just threw her hands in the air and said, that's it, I'm done. This is a complete waste of time. Women these days are just way too picky. So, you know, for any any women that watch this channel, about 4% of my viewers are women and other women stumble upon this, under, and you have an open mind, understand this. If you are younger, if you are in your 20s and you happen to find this video, if you're really picky and you got the giant checklist like I talk about right now and, and the woman, the matchmaker talks about, I got news for you. The clock is going to go by, life is going to go by like this. And next thing you know, in your 30s and your 40s and you're alone, you're crying about it because you don't have a family, you can't have kids anymore and all that. So time to look at things differently. Or if you're women watching this and you're actually kind of cool and you got friends, female friends, female family members that are like this, what she describes, spread the word because believe me, the older they get, it is what it is. The more they go down the totem pole. Because at the end of the day, men, we're attracted to what we see. You know, man, men, we start off on the bottom of the totem pole. But as we get older, we get experience, maturity, confidence, resources, ding, 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 success. We rise in the totem pole. And the successful guys that are accomplished that have risen on the totem pole, believe me, if they can get women in their 20s, 
they're in their prime versus women in their 30s and 40s that were once in their prime, who do you think they're going to go for? So the ones that were too picky, that messed up, had the giant checklist and messed around and kept ditching all the good guys out there for something better, now they're in their 30s and 40s. The same guys they want don't want them. They want the younger girls. So it's best that women in their prime in the 20s, they actually are not only physically appealing, but also actually decent things about themselves. That's when you get a guy. That's when you get a husband, if you go down that route. But be good about it. Don't be uh, one of these schemers, which I talk about in a lot of the stories. But anyhow, guys, that'd be an interesting one to go over. Cause, you know, and stop, by the way, and also the women, stop blaming us. Because there's plenty of good guys out there that do well for themselves, make great husbands and fathers. It's the girls that are way too picky, and it's ridiculous. So, anyhow, guys, quick one. That is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Guys, let me know in the comment section. Is this something you've experienced? Is this something you experience with women that you know? Your, your sister, your female cousin, female uh, female friends, co-workers. I want to hear about it. Spread the word. Share it. Other people will read it. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.